Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Dyson Sphere program. As ever, the channel is sponsored by Trefoil.be. Check them out. They're doing a if you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you can get a free month with the, with them. And they're doing a, a Halloween-based competition where you look for spooky stuff around their website and could potentially win another three months as well. So yeah, no reason not to check them out. You'll get the first month free anyway. And here I come out from behind, hiding behind the um, logistics tower. Right. So let's get on with what I've been up to today. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is that I had um, some major resource problems before with the uh, with the yellow science. So I got the blue and the red science up and, pro up and being produced in their own little towns, and that was going really well, coming through really nicely there. Lots of that, lots of that being produced. Then I moved on to yellow. I built up the town for that about two weeks ago. But unfortunately, it turns out this making this requires massive quantities of titanium, which I didn't have, massive quantities of coal, which I didn't have, and massive quantities of oil, which I didn't have. So the last stream was largely me going around and looking for more resources, or at least get and getting more resource processing up and running. So hence this area here, which I've been calling the new oil Ian's area. So we've been, yes, we've got, essentially it's the same sort of idea as we've, as we've seen before, where we've got massive arrays of, um, of, of oil refineries. And then here, I've gone for a rather simple system. It's just feeding the, both the refined oil and the hydrogen straight into this tower here. And to be honest, I'm mostly after the refined oil here. The hydrogen is a byproduct. So in order to do something useful with that, and I think this is probably going to come in useful later. So we've been pumping it through the system over here, and these are fractionating columns. And these can turn the hydrogen into, basically they turn the hydrogen into hydrogen, but very occasionally they turn the hydrogen into deuterium instead. So we, over here we've got another logistics tower that's basically acting as a storage system at the moment, where we've got just over 5,000 deuterium in, in, in storage over here. And this is something that I shall be using later, I believe, for, for stuff. But the main, reason, the main reason I put it in is because I had so much hydrogen Fill it, completely filling this up because I need massive, massive quantities of um, of the refined oil for the for the yellow science and for a few other things as well. Um, but I don't need any, I don't need very much hydrogen. It is used for the blue science. I think it was blue. Um, no, red science. Sorry, it is used for red science, but in much, much smaller quantities than the uh, than the refined oil is used for the yellow science. So it's I wasn't getting through it anything like fast enough to to, to keep the buffers down. So, but converting it into, into deuterium seems to have worked quite nicely. So, in here we have a recipe that go that looks at the brings in um, looks at the uh, the the uh, hydrogen coming through, and there's a 99% chance that hydrogen will come straight out the other side, and a 1% chance that we'll get some deuterium out instead. So, I'm not sure whether this is actually going to be saving me any storage space or whether the conversion between hydrogen and deuterium is actually a one-to-one. -one. Let's see if we can find out. So we seem to have two recipes here. The 1% one, one which I'm using is a one-to-one. -one. There's also a 10 to 5 which takes two and a half seconds and I'm not... Is that a different recipe I could select in here? No, I don't seem to have... I, I don't know. Maybe that's if it's painted or something like that. But because I was just using this to get rid of some of it, I didn't really care. So what I what I did do in order to, because when I first set this up, the hydrogen was bubbling through here. It was making this gloopy gloopy noise. So you can you can just about make out. Um, but it wasn't really doing. It wasn't really getting trans changed very much. And so in order in order to get this to work, because there's only a one percent chance of it happening, you need to pump the hydrogen through in massive massive quantities. So that's why I've got these three stackers. So if and this this splitter has a priority on the input. So the idea behind this is any hydrogen that comes around here will be repri will be prioritised to go through again and again and again. So it'll just keep going round and round and round and round and round. And if there are any gaps, they'll be filled up by the stuff that's coming out of here. And that's to ensure that the system doesn't just stop because you need to keep it running through these machines in order for it to have a chance of working. So if there's enough back pressure, then we will in theory get it stacked up to four coming out of here because this will stack up to two, this will stack up to four. I've not done any of the faster belt things in here, so if there's a shortage of it, it'll just pass it straight through. Don't care. Don't really care about that. But then as the system starts to fill up, eventually this stacker will start to work. So every so often we'd have a four would go into one of these and it would come out with only three on because one of them had been turned into deuterium. And then when it went back through here, it would somehow it would then sort of manage to more or less pile it back up again. It's a little bit funny but it did seem to be working so um yeah we've now managed to turn all of that hydrogen into deuterium that's happy i'm not gonna i'm not gonna mess around with this and this is this is basically this is basically the setup i wanted to have i wanted to have running and as you can see we've produced we've produced enough of the refined oil that we're now okay with that other resources well the coal was fairly easy to get the to get the larger supplies of it's basically a case of just going around the planet looking for coal veins he says looking for a coal vein he's actually done 
and well there was one I did a while back uh, setting up mining drills like this on the coal veins now this one actually could do with some more drills being put in because I've missed out a chunk of that one um, I've missed out quite a big chunk of this one so this is one I did lo a longer time ago um, <laughs> That's, oh, here we go. Here, here, here's this is probably one of the new ones because this is the way I try to do it these days. I'll put four mines around the around the patch and make sure I've covered with those miners. Make sure I've covered every single vein there is. So you can see they've all got these sort of loops around them as it as it, as it tries to mine them. And as long as you've got all, loops around everything, then you know you're mining from every every single vein there. And it's being fed into here. And as you can see, this is now absolutely full. So let's nip over and have a quick look at the. Um, at the yellow science facility because that is now is now working at the rate at which we uh, we, we, we expect it to um, except that except as usual everything is now completely backed up because I'm not doing science fast enough so I'm um, I think I need to basically my, my plan for the upcoming cup stream or two streams or however long it takes is to also get the purple science often being built in a facility like that so I've got all of them being produced at the steady complete one complete belt rate so we've got we've got at the moment I've done that with I've done that with the blues and the reds where you can see the reds there you can oh yeah you can just about make out the blues over the horizon there and the yellow here so all of these are now capable of producing their science packs at six per second which is a good number. That's a full, a full yellow belt, flow straight into here, and then it means I can, I can take that over by logistics bot over to the other side and deal with it over there. And that's, that's working pretty well for the areas where I've actually got it set up and working. So I just now need to do the purple. However, I've had a look at the, the recipe for purple science, and it's well. These are the the, um, the processes are being made just over here on on mass, so I, that's fine. I'll just, I can just ship them to wherever they're needed. But I then had a bit of a look at this, and there's quite a lot of stuff that goes in here. So I pretty much decided at the end of the last stream that I was going to make up another um, town that's going to produce carbon nanotubes and graphite 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 sheets or graphene. So the bucky tubes and bucky sheets, but not bucky balls because we don't seem to have those yet. I'm uh, going to produce those in their own facility, which is going to mean I'm going to need to bring in coal and oil and um, and titanium, but I'm sure I can manage that. And then we'll be able to ship those out and, and um, start making things much more easily elsewhere. Uh, also for that, I'm, going to, I'm also going to want to make plastic in its own town, because plastic is required for this. So I think if I just get rid of the plastic from across there and... Um, or maybe even build this up as the, use this as the first part of the plastic town. I haven't really decided yet, but then I'll be able to bring that over to here by by um, by logistics bot as well. And the silicon um, smelting, resmelting, I can do on site, so that's fine. Um, but I'll, I want to get these two being made in their own separate facility because I think I need these in quite large quantities for other things as well. So I'd like to get that. I'd like to get a good supply of them being made made in the towns. Once I've done that, I will have then have massive massive quantities of science, and I can think about doing science a bit quicker and then probably start thinking about green science which is the, the final science pack that I haven't actually researched yet and hopefully producing the plastic and the graphene um, off in their own town somewhere else will make will make making the purple science a bit, a bit easier and not quite so complicated and world spanning as this as this as this area has ended up being so that's my plan I'm not quite sure where I'm going to do it because the planet's getting kind of full there is a nice patch of land here if I don't if I if, if I reckon I don't actually mind going away from the uh, the equator which is a bad building away from the equator is a bad idea if you want to massively push out huge constructions because you then have to worry about the tropics lines but there's little bits of space around here maybe maybe I'll put do the plastic in this area here since I've already got a plastic set up here um, and then maybe, and then the purple science here, or the carbon down here, or I don't, I don't know. There's, there's lots to be thought about, um, and there's a fair amount of space left, so I think it's probably going to be all right. But we shall have to see how it goes. I am a little bit concerned about the supplies of hydrocarbons. So, crude oil seems to be okay at the moment, and coal seems to be okay. But I am aware that I'm mining quite a lot of it on this planet, and we might run out of it relatively soon. And as it turns out, like in sort of the real world. Or the real universe, I should say. Um, Hydrocarb carbon, things like oil and coal are fairly rare around the universe because they basically require life to, to generate them. So if I look at Titan, it does. Yeah, okay, it's got a little bit of coal, but it's only a very little bit. If I look at a leaf of four, that's got even less, even less coal. No, slightly more coal, but still not very much. So there's not much point in coming out to either of these planets for those particular resources. I think it's just going to be a case of use up what's on um, on, the, on the on the starting planet and then move away and see how, and then possibly have to think about going interstellar in order to find more uh, more more of the uh, hydrocarbons. So that's a thing I've been so far avoiding, but not but mostly because I haven't needed to go anywhere. 
While I'm zoomed out here, I will acknowledge that I have also renamed this planet to Norvis because I got I kept getting confused and calling it Norvis by mistake. So I thought, yeah, let's let's just rename it to Norvis. Then I won't then then I won't get it wrong. <laughs> So that's 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 two of the resources covered. We've, we've talked about oil. We've talked about um, we've talked about coal. The other resource, in slightly in inverted commas, that I also wanted to boost was power. So if we bring up the the power graphs over here and look back over the last ten hours, you can see that I had big spikes here and here, and it was just getting it was getting a bit out of control. So I've gone and I put in a massive boost on the amount of power. Now, after boosting the power, we've now discovered that we're using almost none of it. Now, there's a couple of possible reasons for that. It could be because I'm not really doing any science at the moment, so most of the base is idling and not having to do stuff. Or, more likely, I suspect these big surges in the power requirements are because a lot of my... Um, a lot of my logistics towers ran out of power in their batteries, so they were all trying to charge up, but there was no power available on the bus, so their demand was growing and as the, as the lack of power was growing, and it was all just a massive, horrible, horrible problem. But, as you can see here, I, made, I found a solution. So, if we zoom out to map view again, that solution was putting in all of these additional dishes up on the, on the pole here and some on the, the other pole as well because sometimes it's summer, sometimes it's winter. So we've got, we've got a cluster of about 10 or 11 dishes on each pole um, and the idea is that in the winter, okay these ones are basically idle at the moment, they're they're, they're, gener okay, they're generating a sort of 300 kilowatts which is not nothing but it's not amazing. Then up here we've got these ones that are generating two and a half megawatts which again it's not amazing, but I think it probably would be higher if the power demands are a bit higher. So up here we've got the all these all these dishes that are pulling in the power as as, as required. And I was told that having dishes on the poles is better than having them on the equator because these ones will receive the dishes take a little while to warm up apparently. So at dawn, which way is the sun moving? This way, okay. So these will, they're just receiving the sun now, but they gradually, apparently it takes them a little while to warm up and get up to sort of operating temperature and effect. And so that means that you get more power per year out of dishes on the poles than you do on the on the, uh, on the the equator. I've not done any sort of hard science into check or data gathering to check whether this is actually true, um, but actually noticeably these ones that are pretty much, it's not quite noon, but they, I reckon they're getting as much sun as these ones are. Are, also, are producing significantly less power. So these are at one megawatt, these ones are at two. So I think there must be some truth in that. So it looks like, if you want if you want some advice for playing this game, it looks like it's a good idea to put your um, solar receiving dishes on the poles rather than on the equator. Which is feels a little bit um, odd and counterintuitive, but never mind. And at least that's going to free up more space on the equator for, making, for, for extending my bus and building out all of these massive, massive uh, factories that I've been doing. So that's three resources covered. The fourth one is uh, is titanium. So I'm going to take a, a quick break from the video here while I charge up the bot and fly over to my other fly over to the other planet I've got that I've got stuff on. So if you'll give me a moment, then I shall make my way over to the other planet, which I've renamed to Titan because it's where the titanium comes from. Uh, we have Chat to thank for that, but it's quite a good name, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy with the idea. And we'll perform the traditional gentle landing. And now, as usual, I'm in the middle of nowhere. So let's go over and see what this is. Right, so yes, in order to get a bit more titanium production up and running, I've set up some more titanium mines. And these follow my... Uh, these now standard um, procedure. Well, okay, I've only got three on this particular patch because, I, I don't know, I just only put down three. Um, and it's filling up a logistics tower. We've got a load of bots in the logistics tower. And they will take the... Um, resource over to where it's required. Now on this planet there don't seem to be very many titanium veins and I think I now have mines on every single one of them. So at some point I may need to uh, go over to the other planet as well which I believe is more titanium-y whereas this one is sort of, this one is silicon heavy, the other one I think is titanium heavy. So from all of that titanium we're bringing all of the ore from at least that mine and possibly another one I can't remember into this tower here. It's then being fed out on, on the belts out here. Well, we've got the other titanium mine that was there before, and that's feeding straight into the tower because it might as well. And then we've got it feeding out onto the belts here where we're smelting it. And this is exactly the same system as we saw with the um, with the silicon last week. We've got, over here, we've got it being fed out onto stackers because it takes two, two ores to make one plate. And it's then coming along here through the smelting machines. We're smelting that happily into into the titanium, passing it out here, and in, then into this inter, in, interplanetary logistics station where we've got well, we don't have any any uh, long any craft in here, but um, 
never mind. They're, they're the ones that they're, they're flying from the other end to come out here and, and to get it as it's needed. So we've now got, as you can see, this this has gone completely to sleep. We've got all of the uh, silicon and all of the titanium we need, and that's now being shipped back over to Norvis, so I can do all of the uh, construction of absolutely everything I need over there. So now we charge the robot back up again because it's expensive in electricity to fly between planets. And I can fly back over again and show you what else I've been doing. I do miss the uh, navigation satellite from um, some Factorio Space Exploration, if I'm being honest, because that allows you to have a look at other planets without actually having to go out to them yourself. So it saves a lot of effort when you're trying to make these catch-up videos. So, that covers all the resource gathering. We've still got a bit of... Oh, this is glass manufacturing happening over here. That's That looks a bit slow. That is clearly insufficient for whatever is demanding the glass somewhere further down the bus. So we might yeah, that's something I'll need to take, have a think about and probably upgrade next time. But we'll ignore it for now. La 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 la, fingers and ears, etc, etc. So I did a few other things as well. Um, I've not done any massive new mega constructions, with the exception of the, the new oil processing area. But I've done a few little things. So along here, um, we already have the painting machines. I've started making these, which are, what are these? Frame materials in order to make, this was to make the fractionators. Uh, no, this was to make, to make particle colliders. Okay, I needed them for something else, which I'll to talk about. Um, actually, pretty much right now. No. No, I won't. I'll talk about them in a bit, because I'm going to talk about something else first. Now, people have been suggesting to me that I investigate the uh, logistics robot system in this game, which is, seems fair because in, in uh, Factorio they're incredibly useful. And I've, so, in a way, these things, these towers, are a bit like the train system in Factorio with LTN added into it and uh, a distinct lack of tracks and, um, and any sort of throughput limitations so these are sort of somewhere between the um the logistics but or the, the logistics bots and the trains and i've been trying to think about them as trains because i don't really like using logistics bots for major logistics for things like science building so i've been thinking of them as trains because then it's acceptable but these are very much more like the logistics bots which you use for supplying for supplying the player in fact, that's almost exactly what they're there for. Um, and there's two parts to this system. There are these things, the uh, logistics dis distributors, um, which you can put on top of a, which you can put on top of any storage crate. So I have been. And then there's these things, which are the actual uh, logistics bots themselves. Um, and again, I've put a distributor on there. And this means that over here in my inventory, I now have a logistics section. And this means I can say that I want to always have at least. Um, uh, how do I read this? Yeah, okay, so there we go. Um, the numbers at the top, got 750 in blue is the minimum number that, that I'm allowed to have before the log logistics bots start bringing it to, to me. 750 in white in the middle is how much I currently have in my inventory, and 1500 is the maximum amount I can have before they'll come along and start taking it away from me. So I could pick up some bits of belt here and there if I was doing some tidying, and it, would, it wouldn't be a problem. But if I put down some belts, so let's, let's, let's just put down an arbitrary chunk of belt like this, just because it'll use some of it up. Now if I have another look in here you can see it now, now shows that my current inventory is 730. There's a plus 20 in blue and that means there's some being brought to me. And You can see there's a little blue arrow there as well so I imagine if I just sort of wait patiently for a few minutes we'll see that being float we'll see that being flown over to me in a, in a moment or two. And I've got the same thing for to give me a stack of a supply of the uh, logistics bots and of stackers and of the bigger logistics bots and the sort of the logistics spaceships. Here, here they come. So those have flown over now, and I now have, presumably, I now have 750, 750 belts, because those, those little robots brought them over to me. So you see how the system works. It's quite simple, and it just keeps me supplied with all of the bits and pieces that I need. So I've been going along here, gradually putting these things on top of all of the boxes. Well, actually, no, I've been doing more than that. I've been putting in boxes and limit, limit in theory, limiting them. Uh, here's one I did, did properly. Um to a sensible number of these things and then putting one of these little thick distributors on top uh, which is basically turning it into a, a red chest as far as Factorio is concerned and I think you can also use them to turn into a blue chest so if I select that yeah we can use this to pro we can use this to provide and collect or we can use it for distributing to other distributors so I think that means I could put one of these on top of an empty box like this and then set this to presumably request them so I could have I could have this one distribute to other distributors. Uh, give this one some bots. I'm making this up as I go along, so I didn't actually try this before. There we go, there's some bots. Um, provide to Icarus, collect from Icarus, collect auto. Mm, I don't know, but there, there, there is a way. I shall have to look into this. There is a way to get the to get the logistics system to carry stuff over and provide it for um, 
for other machines to making things. Uh, I haven't. Oh, maybe you can put them straight onto the top of. Um, can I find the first one? Maybe you can put them on. No, you can't. Okay, now it has to be attached to storage. I don't know how that works. I'll have to look into it. Um, but if there's a quick and obvious answer, do let me know in the comments. But the, yeah, the idea is you can also use them to supply parts out. I don't need to do that because I have a bus for all of that sort of thing, and that's how I how I factory game. But the uh, the theory is the theory is valid that you could use these to uh, to bring, bring stuff out if you wanted to. So yes, I then sort of wandered along here, adding these in for just about everywhere. So there's another one here. You can see it here for the uh, for the dishes. So I can request those for the robots, for the or for the for the medium logistics things and the large logistics things. Um, I've even put one in for the uh, interplanetary logistics towers, and so on and so on. So the next next another thing I did. I don't know how to exactly how to work how, how to words um, was I, I also built up a miniature particle collider and that was because I wanted to start building these things which are the gravitron lenses a uh, graviton lenses rather there's no extra R in that um, which are which you can put into the into the solar di array of solar dishes in order to make them be a bit more efficient although it turns out I haven't actually done the research of that yet so they're just gathering in a, in a box it also turns out I was informed by chat that they are a consumable so it's not it's not a this is an upgrade for that it is this is a thing that gets used up by these in order to um, in order to generate extra power but I can put one of those lenses in and then the thing gets far more effective and more efficient and with the same number of dishes you can pull a lot more power Power out of your Dyson Swarm, and at the moment I'm using, as you can see, just over half of the available power. So at the moment this is massive overkill for what I'm what I'm doing. But there is a lot of power available. There's a lot of power available there, and if I can put these in, then it's going to make the, uh, the the dishes a little bit more efficient. I I can't remember the numbers, but it does. It certainly improves them. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it says in there. So we'll uh, we'll we'll find out later. But apparently, but they're a thing that you produce in large, in massive quantities, and then just steadily feed into the um, into the dishes. So that's probably going to be something that I again will eventually do elsewhere off site. Now I'm pretty sure I needed these green things for something else. Maybe maybe it was just these that I was making them for, or maybe it was to make this building. I can't remember. There was. I spent a bit of time faffing around trying to make purple things into green things in order to do more and more and more science. Oh, it looks like, yeah, so the purple things are being made here. They're being fed out along here, and they're being used for both this and this. But we seem to run out of them because we don't have any um, electromagnetic, magnetic, electromagnetic turbines because we've run out of coils. So this is another thing where I've... Um, I should probably be making it a town to make these off the bus because apparently the coil production system I have going on over here is insufficient. Oh, it's insufficient because of the number of magnets coming through. That's interesting because I reduced the number of magnet machines over here because I thought I wasn't going to be using them particularly quickly because I started making something that was using a lot of them elsewhere off the bus. So actually it turns out that we... Oh, and that's struggling because we don't have enough iron ore coming in. So actually what I should probably do is turn this belt round so it flows the other way. And we can get some of this being brought along here and going in here. But at the moment, I don't know how much I need to worry about that. I think I do need to worry about it a bit, though, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to need quite a lot of those turbines, at the very least because they're, they're used to make, uh, make the better belts. So that's going to be a thing to think about upgrading, I reckon. Um, but yes, we shall, we, shall, uh, we shall see when I get around to that. So I think that brings me more or less up to date. I pulled up all of the uh, the all the machines over here, the, all the machines that were making the yellow science directly. So that's why there's a big gap in here with some sort of infrastructure around it. Um, but I've left in the ones that are making the uh, the titanium crystals, the organic crystals, and the plastic because I'm more, I'm feeding the plastic further down the bus. So in theory, I might end up needing that later on. Um, my theory with buses is that buildings and stuff for infrastructure should be made on the bus um, because there's so many different things you need all of the different ingredients to be together in one place but then anything that's required for making science or anything else that you make on mass should be shifted off to town so you're not swamping the bus with it which is why I need to move the purple science off the bus at some point and probably need to move turbines and maybe even these gravitron lenses off the bus as well because those are the things that are just taking up those are things where you need a steady flow of them coming through so because of that, they should be being done in towns. But that's something I'll, I'll worry about later, I think. Because at the moment, things are ticking over okay. So, what am I going to do next time? That's a very good question. I shall be um, moving the... I think next time I'm going to move the Purple Science off to its own town. So that's going to mean making a plastic town, a bucky sheet and a bucky tube town, and then a Purple Science town. And also adapting the yellow science town to start using the plastic from the um, from the from the uh, plastic town. 
Uh, I also need to consider whether I want to make a bigger paint town now that I actually have enough um, now to have enough coal available for, for doing that. Um, there's, these are quite big stacks. Uh, so here, as you can see, we're making the tier one paint, and this is is also feeding it out into yes, this storage. Um, this lot logistics station here where it is getting taken away to all other places that will use the paint um, But I don't really think I'm making it quickly enough because if we look we're only got 384 in here So that's a bit a bit feeble um, It's all getting used up along here being in, in, in painting the science I think so it's a thing that needs to be needs needs to be done. I'll, uh, I'll I might I might consider expanding that as well But I think purple science and all the things that go into it are probably my next Priority. That's going to be the next thing for me to work on, and we'll, we shall see how that goes. Once the purple science is upgraded, I'm, I'll probably put in a second one, one of these. Can I just copy and paste this entire tower? Um, that'd be quite entertaining. Just that, please. Um, and put it in there. I can, but it seems to have only done the. Um, it hasn't done the inserters, which is a bit of a shame. But I can. I can add those in fairly quickly myself. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Uh, this hasn't been a stream. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, and well, and you'll be coming back next time when we shall be um, carrying on with a far more Dyson Sphere program. And that'll be on Wednesday. So Wednesday evening at um, 7.30 UK time. I should be playing some more Dyson Sphere program and maybe getting my science factory up to the point where where this sort of level of crazy, crazy science speed is not impossible. So let's see how fast this goes. Let, let's, let's pick an upgrade because they tend to use all of the sciences, but one that doesn't use... I was going to say one that doesn't use purple, but I think I might have done all of those. What about you? Yeah, you're still... All right, we'll do, we'll do that one. And there we go. See, now it's pulling in all of the science. We've got, hopefully, we've got enough throughput and input that we'll be able to do science at just an absolutely astonishing rate. I'm hoping these three machines at the top here are going to kick in as well, because I don't see why they wouldn't. We've got all... For the moment, we've got all four science packs being fed in until this belt runs out of a buffer. So, okay, there's, now we're down to only two of them not running. Oh, we need to wait for this to fill up with purple. Uh, like, 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 it's nearly there. Okay, that one's kicked in now. So, yeah, we're feeding those in as fast as we possibly can. And hopefully this, this should then be enough to keep everything running. I think I might need to start putting stackers on these as well to get the um, get the science packs in a bit a bit more quickly. Because this is clearly not sufficient for my, uh, for my needs. So that's a, an upgrade I'm going to. I, I, I also want to do, especially if I then put another another tower and another tower. It's just going to be, yeah, enormous quantities of science. But look how quickly this one's running through. This is a thousand science packs, a thousand of each science pack, and it's just absolutely hammering through it. It's half, almost half done already. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming later later in the game there are going to be some absolutely huge um, researches that need to be done. Let's have a quick look. Um, in the technologies and over here somewhere. So to get the universe matrix, it's only actually it's only two thousand of each and four thousand of the white. So maybe not that much. I don't know. Or maybe there's some sort of post end game stuff that I'm going to want to do. Twenty fourth. Oh, here we go. So these some of these ridiculously high uh, ones are fourteen thousand of and yeah, many many thousands. Um, and making the white science packs requires all of the other science packs to do so, I believe. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> And there we go. Now we've run out of purple science, so the, so the research is going to grind to a halt. This is why I need a town off somewhere else. So yes, Wednesday evening for the uh, for the Dyson Sphere program stream, where I shall fix all of the all of the problems we've talked about today. Well, one or two of them anyway. Um, and then Monday night for the Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 stream. That's the multiplayer one. Uh, that's great fun. Do recommend you come along to that. And uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the update videos. And there's other little bits and pieces coming out at other times. I started to sort of try and get a few other videos coming out here and there. It depends on when I, when I have the time in the rest of my life to make them. So, uh, yes, please do come along. Keep an eye, keep an eye on the channel to, for uh, everything else that's happening. I uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.